Well, being the only boy with two sisters, he was uh, a typical brother, good brother, um, a tease, of course, which hasn't changed at all. He's still the same way. His main uh, tease in life was the older sister. Uh, and of yeah. course, they both used me because I was younger to keep on their side. They both wanted me on their side, so I kind of lucked out there. <laughs> Just recently, um, one of his childhood, his best childhood friend, uh, said to us, he said, you know, I always knew Dick was going to be a priest. We said, you did? He said, he said, when we were young, we used to play mass all the time. And he said, I always had to be the altar boy, and Dick always had to be the priest. So I knew right from the beginning that that's the way he was headed. First, I want to thank the Center for Hospice for recognizing Father Warner and for all the incredible ministry they provide to our community. I mean, they're the crown jewel in this community. And I just can't think of a better recipient for this award than Father Warner. He's always been so helpful. He's always been a guide, um, a support. He's been compassionate, characteristically compassionate in every decision he's made. And, uh, and his impact has been felt here at the Center for the Homeless over the past 22 years. 50,000 people have been here, and uh, his mark has been left on each and every one of them. I've watched him minister to countless people, to faculty, staff, and students, especially students at Notre Dame, to people in the Michiana community through his work with the Center for the Homeless and the Memorial Hospital Board, uh, and to his brothers in Holy Cross, uh, both here at Notre Dame and globally. Uh, and on those occasions, I've watched him pour himself out for others. He was on the Memorial Health System Board for 18 years. And so if you look at anything in the community today that Memorial Hospital and Health System is involved in, uh, it was under the leadership of Father Warner, uh, whether it's in the, the, some of the beautiful uh, buildings and facilities and equipment that has been constructed and purchased to provide the absolute best care in the country here in South Bend. Father Warner has a great charisma that young people pick up on. He, um, he gets that twinkle in his eye, and you just get the sense that um, there's some, he's got something special in mind for you, and it gets young people motivated. So he gets people to do the craziest things. He gets young people to fly off to Chile. He got me to join the priesthood. I don't know who first coined the adage that the eyes are the mirror to the soul, but they must have had Dick Warner in mind because those deep brown eyes fix in you and Dick is present to you. Even though he's got a thousand other things on his calendar, when he's with you, he's completely focused on you and your needs at that particular point in time. Um, and he does that in so many different contexts. Um, he is able to see people in their most vulnerable stages and reach out to them. Whether that happens to be a student who's just experienced the loss of a grandparent, whether it's the people that society sees as the most m marginalized, Dick just pours himself out for others. And that comes from his deep faith. It's, his, it's that core faith that shines out, rises from his soul and shines out through his eyes. He cares about the people around him. He's engaged with them. Uh, he learns their name and learns the names of all the students. He, he, but others as well. He brings people together, makes connections. He does it in a quiet way. He doesn't need to draw attention to himself but he tries to help people, and as a priest and just as a friend, that's the most important quality of, I remember of him, and it's, it's what inspires me about him. For, for a guy from Cleveland, he's seen every corner of the world, and uh, I don't know how you can keep up with his schedule and his travel, and whenever you're with him, uh, just he's so full of energy and enthusiasm, and he might have just come off a plane in, in uh, 12 hour different time zone, and he just got off that plane two hours ago and might be full of jet lag, but he is fully present when he's with you. He even exhausts us when he's home. I mean, even to the youngest one, right? Right, we're They're, all tired we're all, when he leaves. He leaves and he'll like this, but he'll leave. They, the couple of the nieces named the time after he goes back as post Uncle Dick syndrome, <laughs> which we shortened to PUDS, and uh, we say, that's it, everybody's, we're not seeing each other now for a few days, we're all gonna sleep, we're gonna relax, and off he goes on his next whirlwind and yeah, right. leaves a great time behind, but leaves us exhausted. <laughs> Bill and I can't figure it out because we can't keep up with him. We will have downtime and he's got three meetings planned and then we'll meet him and go on for something else. It comes from his heart, he wants to do it so badly and he cares so much about other people. And it was a wonderful thing that Dick was able to spend so many years of his life in Chile to give great leadership there with the college we have and to enter into the lives of so many students. 
He has meant so many things for so many of us, but for me the most important thing, aside from being a great friend, one of my best friends throughout my life, he is the embodiment of priesthood. Uh, Father Warner is the priest, uh, and I think that that's one of his most important uh, legacies, you know? uh, his loyalty to the church, and especially to Jesus Christ. So. He has been a, a permanent source of inspiration for many of us throughout our lives. I think Dick's legacy for the university is to live the joy of the gospel and the gospel service. Dick embodies that in his life. He inspires students with that. He exemplifies that and inspires people like me and so many other uh, people who work here. And that just has an impact on, and has had an impact and will continue to have an impact on Notre Dame. I think Father Warner is inspired so much by personal relationships and that's where he that's where he gets his passion from so that's why he he will stop anything he's doing for you and he will always give off this passionate when he sees you all that matters is you and that's and that's inspirational to us. I think Dick has a natural disposition to generosity. I think it's his understanding of the way you are a priest, uh, the way you are Christ for other people. He just is naturally predisposed to a listening and a, a loving uh, concern. I would say that education is an investment in the future. You know? And to form leaders has been one of the great characteristics and charismas uh, of Father Richard Warner uh, in Chile. Honestly, I think that his 12 years in Chile shaped a, a good part of the way he approaches ministry. You know, when you go to Chile, uh, Lat Latin culture in general is not in a hurry. And Latin culture in general is not focused on getting things done. It's really focused on building a relationship. I think that really shaped the way he approaches relationships in in teaching, in campus ministry, in uh, his whole way of being as a priest. Um, he never considers spending time with people a waste of time. Father Warner, if you said one thing about him, he's a great priest. And as a great priest, he's been a wonderful chaplain. He's entered the lives of thousands of young men. He's helped them with their crises. He's helped them with their development. He's given them inspiration, which we hope to do at Notre Dame, as well as great spiritual advice. And I think one would have to say that there are literally hundreds of Notre Dame grads who are better people today, more focused, more dedicated, uh, more Notre Dame, if you will, because of their contact with Father Dick. As a young priest, you hear a lot of legends about Father Warner about he um, stared down General Pinochet in Chile. He stared down Eni Amin in Africa. He was in Bangladesh when, during the Civil War when some of our Holy Cross brothers were killed. And you, you hear these stories one after another and you're like, when does this guy ever sleep? He's constantly on the go. He's tireless in what he does. You know, he just loves people and he loves the gospel. I'd say that's the most important thing about Dick. He is at his core a priest who cares about people, who ministers to people, who never tires of it, who never asks anything for himself for doing that. Uh, he just, he gives. And uh, that's the most wonderful quality. And it's why he's so respected. When you think after all he's done in his life to be elected uh, Superior General of the whole Congregation of Holy Cross around the world, that says something about how people respect him. This year when he was, when he became the head of the Congregation of Holy Cross, we expected to not see him as much. But uh, I remember him telling us how he tried to change his plans to be back for a Fisher Hall football game. Or for study week every year, he would uh, buy sandwiches for us and we didn't expect them this year. But all of a sudden, first day of study weeks, they're there outside his room, even though he's in Rome. So he managed to buy them for us and to, to think about Fisher even when he's busy in Rome. With his schedule when he was still at Notre Dame, it was funny because he said, uh, Janet said to him when she heard of all his things, you know, I have to go here that day and here that day and then I'm going here and here and here. And she said, I feel so sorry for your secretary. I wouldn't be your secretary for anything for in the world. Dollars. Which his response, <laughs> of course, to you was? He wouldn't have me. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> if I had the chance to say something directly to Father, I would just say thank you. Thank you for the time and effort you've put into Fisher Hall, and and thank you for make for helping make the dorm helping make my dorm life so much better because you've stopped and and cared about us. Nobody's believed in me more than you, um, and uh, I'm forever grateful. I, I love you, and uh, I, I'm so thankful for what you've done for this community and and what you're doing around the world. And and we miss you here. But like I said, I think uh, I think I'm seeing you more than I used to. Um, so uh, we love when you come back home uh, to Notre Dame. When I took my first vows in Holy Cross, he was there. When I was ordained, he was there. When my father passed away, he was there. When my grandmother passed away, he was at the funeral. Um, Father Warner knows how to be a friend and he knows how to be a brother in Holy Cross. And I love him for it.